Hello guys, welcome once again to another tutorial session on bioinformatics. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can extract multiple gen sequences from a gen bank file using Python. And for the particular task, what we are going to do is that you extract the sequences for some genes from an E. coli genome. And for you to follow this tutorial, you need to have a text file that contains the gen's interests. I've already prepared that file and download link will be given in the description box below. You should also have BioPython installed on your system. This tutorial can be run on any operating system, provided it has Python and the BioPython library installed. So let's quickly look at the genes that we are going to extract. And this the file here, it's a text file, and I have the list of the genes in them and so this is the list we have these genes these are virulence genes that can be found in equalized strains so if you also have your gen list then you need to arrange it as i've done here each gen name should be in a separate line so that um, python can easily read it so this is how it's going to be done so now let's quickly go to the download page and then download the genome we are going to use. Of course, it will be in the GenBank format. So this is the page for downloading the genome. We are going to use the E. coli Sakai strain genome. So this is the page. I will leave the link in the description box so that you can also quickly use that to visit this page. And once you are on this page, you download by going to send to check complete record and then check file under the choose destination. When you come to the formats, use GenBank 4, this particular format here. And then you click on the create file. So you'll be asked to download it and then you save it. So I will save it on my desktop. So I click on save. And then I will save it on my desktop here. And I will give it a name here. So instead of sequence.gb, I will say sakai.gb. And then I will save it. So download is complete. And this is the file that has been downloaded. So let's quickly go to the Python terminal and continue the rest of the task. So on the Python terminal, the first thing we will do is to set a path to the genome and then the text file that has the gene names. So let's do that here. We start with the genome file. So we say genome file is equals to This becomes the path. And then the text file here, you see, gen list file. So this is it. Now, take note that the path is likely to change on your computer. And so you make sure you put the correct path there. After setting the path, we will now import our BioPython library. So we see from bio import seek io. That is also done. We will now proceed to read the gen list first. So to read it, we will use this particular command here. So we say with open gen list file, and then we give the mode as input file. Then we now come to the next line where we read it line by line. So we say gen 
names is equals to line dot strip for line in input file and so we are reading it line by line and then we make sure we remove the new line character after reading we can even check how many genes we are dealing with here so we can say then gen names so we have 28 genes you can even check some of the names so let's just look at the first five names you see gen names zero to five so that will give us some names here at least there's the five so we are good to go it is now time to read the gen bank file so to do that we assign that question to an a variable name which we call gb objects we say seek io dot read genome file and then we give the format if you are new to this kind of video please watch my first video on how to read genbank file to understand some of these commands okay so we've now read it the next is to extract all the genes from this particular genbank objects that we have read so we see all genes equals to feature for feature in gb objects that features if feature dot type is equals to gen so what we are doing is that we are extracting all the features that has the type gen after doing that we can even check how many genes we have and that is 5329 But of course, we are only interested in the 28 genes in this file. So that is what um, we are going to do next. So the next is to do that particular um, extraction or subsetting, if you call it that way. And we be, do that by first creating an empty list. So we say final gen. Let's just call them gen sequences and we we'll give it an empty list. After that, we will now iterate through all these genes and then we we'll look up their names. And if their names are also present in this gen names list, which we created here, then that's a hit. So we extract the sequence. So we'll do that using the for loop. So we now see for gen in all genes. If for gen in all genes, that's the name. So that means each of these genes we are going to iterate through that. So now we say if gen in gen dot all files dot keys we need this information if there's a, a name in that particular keys then we proceed and we say gene name is equals to gen dot call file gen So after getting the name, then we check if the name here is here. So we see if gen name in gen names. If it's there, then it's a hit. So we now proceed to do the extracts. So we say extract 
is equals to gen dot extract because we are extracting a sequence. Now we feed in the argument for the GB objects. So after doing the extraction, we still need to add some additional information, such as the ID. So we see extract dot ID is equals to gen name. It's also important we give a blank description. So we will say extract dot description is equals to this. Because we don't want to give any description at the moment. We just want it to be clean. And so after doing this, we now append that information to gene sequences. So we say gene sequences that append extracts. It is also important that whenever you have such a code running, you track what's happening. Okay, at least we have several activities being done here. Uh, I'm referring to the loop here. And so we track if the gene has been found or not. So we can just issue another print statement here saying, print, sorry, we just do it this way. You see, gene percentages has been found. So the percentages means you are going to input a string, which here becomes the gene name. So now we run the code. Okay, so now the code has been run, and then notice that this information has been printed for each of them, indicating that they were all found. So we can quickly check the length of this list we created, the one which has all the sequences there. That's here. So we can check the length. So we can just say len gen sequences. Let's confirm that we have the correct name there. Yes, so that's it. And it gives us 28, which is the same as the gen list we read here. And this was it. So we are good to go. Now we have everything we need in terms of the genes and then their respective sequences. So we now save it. So in order to save you first, make sure you have the name of the output file. We we'll say output file is equals to slash home slash corbina. Yes. And then we give it a name. So what name should we give it? You can say VIR factors that faster. We are using this name because we want to save it as a faster format. That becomes its name. So now finally we now save it. So we say seek IO dot right and then say gen sequences. That's the list that contains the sequences. And then we give the output file. And then we give the format, which is faster. So now we save it. So after saving it, it also indicates how many sequences has been saved. And that is here. So we are now good to go. So now let's quickly go to the desktop where we save it to check the file out. So this is the file that we have here. So let's open it to check the contents. So this is the content of the file that we saved. So notice we have each of these things and their sequences saved here. So this is how we do it um, for extracting the sequences. So from here, there are a number of things you can do depending on your research question. You might want to do some phylogenetic analysis or do some other calculations or computing. That's up to you. But um, in general, this is how you'll be able to extract multiple sequences, multiple sequences from a particular Zimbang file. So I'll see you in the next session, and then we'll just continue from where we left off with this um, feature extractions. So that'll be all for this tutorial, and I'll see you in the next session. Bye-bye.